G'day folks, what a glorious morning to be out in the bush filleting and cooking some redfin, or as you might know them in your country, English perch. Let's get straight to it. I've got three redfin here that Holly and I caught at Lake Buffalo the other day. They aren't big redfin, but they're big enough to get a couple of fillets off. And this is the chopping board that I'm going to be using, which was sent to my mail time segment by Alex Francis just recently. Big shout out to Alex Francis. Thanks for the chopping board. That's not an overly big chopping board, so that's another good reason to keep some redfin that aren't, aren't overly big. Now, smaller redfin are actually easier to fillet than larger redfin, and I'll explain why as I'm doing it. Now, here's the first red fin. What I like to do is bend the head right back like that, then get my knife and cut behind the head and cut the head off. Now, one of the good things about being out the bush is that I can get my red fin head and I can just throw it out the bush in the, in the scrub and the ants and bull ants and whatever will come along and make light work of that. Now, what I want to do is cut along the back fin here, the dorsal fin, just above the backbone. So I'll cut in behind this rib cage here. I'll cut in in there. And I'll make I'll go along the backbone. Now, a moment ago I said that smaller redfin are easier to fill it, and I'll show you why. That's because you can cut through those bones. With the larger redfin, you've got to carve around them. But with these smaller redfin, you can just rip straight through them just like that. I've gone right through the whole spine there. That was a bit of a mishap, but that's okay. This knife, I only just bought this knife the other day at Anaconda in Aubrey. It's a Gerber knife and it is ridiculously sharp. So that's just cut straight through that backbone there. And I'll do the same on this side. I'll cut in under there, I'll cut through the rib cage. And as I make my way along, and there we go. I've sort of butchered that a bit because my knife is so sharp that I cut straight through the backbone. But there's two fillets on the plate there. Do the same with this one off the head. Now those fillets aren't finished. I like to do them in bulk. I cut the sides off all three, then I debone them. So I'll go along, cut the bones off them along the side of the backbone. Pin that down, run my knife right down to the end. Gee, I've done it again. This is a very sharp knife. This is a very sharp knife. Incredible. It's the first time I've used it and I'm blown away by the sharpness. By just how sharp it is. Go along, Cut that off there. Right, there's another fillet. There's the backbone. All the scraps are going to the bush. This one here, I ripped the head off it a bit earlier. It's a, a larger fish. Cut along the backbone. What I now have are three of these fillets. Some have still got the fins on, they've all got the rib cage. Now I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. The first thing I want to do is cut along here and get rid of that star, that top fin like that. That's gone. Now I want to cut the gills, the, the gill plate and the, we call this bit the shoulder. I want to cut all that off. So I'll go in behind there and I'll cut that off. Now all that's left to do is cut these bones out, just like that, cut them out and then skin the fillet. And to do that I'll put my fingernail down on the skin and I run my knife under the fillet, between the fillet and the skin. This knife's actually too sharp for this. Ideally you want a knife that's sharp but not super sharp. This is a bit too sharp but it's working. If it's too sharp like this, you can carve up over the meat and lose meat, or you can cut through the skin, which can make it hard to remove later. Let's do the same with this one. He hasn't got any fins along the top there, but there's one down the back, so I'll cut all this gill plate stuff off. Being very careful not to cut my fingers off in the process. Turn that over, cut these bones out. Sometimes I like to run my finger along there, or my knife, and feel for bones. Then once again, put my fingernail down like a clamp under the back of the tail. Then put my knife down between the uh, 
the skin and the flesh and just slide the flesh off the skin. Now this one here you'll see has a little bit of fin just there so I'm just going to cut that off where that fin was because there can sometimes be a few little bones there. Now I'll repeat that process with these other fillets. Right now I've got my six fillets here, now what I'm going to do is wash them and because I'm not near a tat I actually brought a two litre drink bottle with me full of water so that I can wash my hands and wash my fillets. Now my fillets are nice and clean and as I've washed them I've just sort of ran my finger along feeling for anything, any bones or anything. They're nice and clean. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I best prefer to cook these red fin fillets when they're this size. Right, it's time to start cooking. Now I'm going to be cooking on a frying pan, a gas frying pan. This is a, it's like a butane stove, but it's a, it's a special one that Dale up at Anaconda in Albury talked me into buying. It's like a butane burner, but it's a full length frying pan with a lid, like a, uh, an electric frying pan. So I'll put my knife under there to take the lid off. I won't need the lid. There's the frying pan. Underneath there is the burner. So I'll put my, uh, my gas bottle in. Turn that on. And it should light straight away. There it goes. This is a ripper. Like I said, it's like the electric frying pan that you can put the lid on and you can cook rice or whatever you want to cook in it. But I'm cooking redfin. Now I'll turn that right down. What I'm going to do now is crumb the fish. Now I'm not going to use egg and bread crumbs like I have in recent day in previous redfin cooking videos. I'm just going to use bread crumbs on their own. The reason being, because the fillets are so small, what happens, the egg and bread crumbs make up most of the meal and you barely taste the fish. With larger fillets, egg and bread crumbs are good, but with smaller fillets, just bread crumbs on their own are a better option. Now I've got a Ziploc bag here, and I'm going to pour a whole heap of these bread crumbs into the bag. I reckon at least half of them. Now I'm going to get my wet fillets, because they are wet because I just washed them, and I'm going to put them in those breadcrumbs.
And just like the old McDonald's shaker fries, I don't even know if you can get them anymore. I'm going to uh, shake them up as much as I can to coat those fillets in breadcrumbs. And as you can see there, they're, uh, they're coating quite nicely. Make sure they all get covered. Now they're looking good. Righto. Let's throw the fish into the pan. Now these are looking really good, and I do have a tendency to overcook things. They are looking good. On full speed, they'll probably only take a couple of minutes, but I've got them down really low. But they'll probably only take five minutes or so to cook. Now I reckon they've done, they've probably only taken four or five minutes to cook. Let's dish them up and see how they taste. Alright now, I'll turn my stove off. Time to enjoy the fruits of my labour. I'm actually using a different plate here. It's never a good idea to use the same plate that you put the fish on. That's the plate that I put the fillets on, that's over there. Righto. Let's dig in. You can see there it's nice and white, flesh, beautiful. That is so, so good. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this now. I'll get back to you when I've finished eating. Well, folks, that was amazing. Absolutely beautiful. And it was also my breakfast. What a wonderful breakfast I've started my day with. Big shout out to my dad. He gave me that idea on how to crumb the redfin that size. I've always used egg and bread crumbs and I've got my hands dirty dipping it into the egg and dipping it into the bread crumb and then there's crumbs everywhere. He said, why don't you just put the crumbs in a Ziploc bag and shake it up? That's what I do. So I did it and it works a treat. I think for all of my small to medium size redfin cooking from now on, I'm going to be using this technique. The crumbs didn't overpower the beautiful, delicate taste of the redfin. It was just a wonderful, uh, a wonderful way to cook redfin. Folks, I hope you've learned from this. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Thank you all very much for watching.